Uh, yeah, so I'm going to make a second uh, modification to some things that I mentioned in my rambling discourse on um, integral in uh, not specifically on integral, but just talking about some of the issues. So uh, when I mentioned and tried to describe uh, a notion about self-segregation in terms of cultural space, um, uh, I did just want to further qualify that in terms of um, it, it's so hard to kind of get into these issues you know, you're kind of directly stepping on the toes of that social justice dogma, um, and you know, you're you're hitting on on all the landmines of their you know uh, strategy, which is usually to throw accusations and then run away, and leaving a field of booby traps essentially to be stepped on, and then you step on one of them, and then they've proved their point from their um, intellectual dishonesty. And, and retreat, but uh, shielded. Oh, anyway, uh, analogies aside, um, so let me see if I can just modify this slightly so because I would say that the, the the cultural experience is as broad as one has access to accessing um, a shared cultural experience, which would just be, let's say, the level at which honesty occurs within in the interpersonal space within a, a, a society or within the thing in which you're, you're prepondering if, if that is a shared culture or not. And um, I would say definitely in, in the kind of, in, in the open Western sense, we have that, you know, everyone is, has access to newspapers, not that newspapers are bastion of anything these days, but, you know, th th there is, um, uh, especially with technology, like getting online and things like that and, and reading unfiltered um, uh, exchange of opinion. Um, and generally, that culture of honest discourse still exists, you know, that you can find people. Obviously, um, the, the ideology, the, the convoluted racist ideology of the SJW crowd, you know, uh, they're the ones putting up these obstacles in terms of authentic exchange uh, because of of wanting to be shielded from racism or whatever rhetoric they use. It, it's, it's a very strange thing, but there is an illustration of that self-segregation in that kind of mentality because it's like uh, the social justice warrior gets to make these accusations of racism against people and it doesn't doesn't go the other way. They can't receive the accusation back at them because they don't have power or they represent those without power. So they can't be accused of being racist. You know, so they've got this kind of objective qualification, which I would say is even questionable because they can only rely on that in some kind of statistical claim, in some kind of aggregate sense. They can't, you know, it only works if you if you hitch your star to that very... Uh, a rigid narrative and that very oversimplified thing, which doesn't account for, um, you know, uh, power of of individuals who fall into that group, but which don't enjoy white privilege, or I guess they're made honorary white privilege people. But you know, these are the people at at the core of these movements, even. Um, you know, it's, it's quite ironic almost that you find that the most privileged people ever are kind of the 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 um, the leaders of 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 these institutions that are champions of social justice. You know, it, it's a uh, uh, it's, it's it's a strange sort of uh, thing where they their success on ideological merit is the vision of of how everything is supposed to be cured or treated. And that only through that window of a special dispensation from government power intervening on their group's behalf, which will obviously always find itself concentrated on a minority experience, on, on, a, on an elite experience that, uh, that can never be um, scaled to the whole of a society because there isn't enough zero-sum pie to go around. And because they're sort of, that is the only solution that they have because 
still need to weave the unsubstantiated integrity part of this because it is on the basis of their claim that they need to be that their integrity needs to be honored um but because it has no substantiation behind it which is you know which they are responsible for or accountable to they have no um they don't have to have any kind of plan planning they don't have any kind they don't have to have any kind of pragmatism whatsoever they can just demand from the other side and so as long as you have that other side that's capable of of being extracted from which obviously that's where the whole ideological solution and formula breaks down is because that only works if they're the the perpetual underdog that get to kind of parasitically uh redistribute uh justice towards themselves you know so it's like it's this forever justice claim it's based on a kind of innocence and because that innocence is not capable of of ever growing up as it were because if it does then it actually gets to it has to substantiate itself it has to um uh or well, it has to substantiate itself without its ideological armor which it's um you know it it kind of has to yeah w- without delegitimizing the entire system it has no leverage with which to kind of uh uh invoke an intercessor uh that basically writes them a blank check so this is the problem is that because the check is blank because it never ends until there's some kind of ideological ideological reckoning or break even point and so this is the the primary problem is because what they're demanding is in fact a blank check until some kind of a quality of outcome uh situation they can take that black check blank check and be as exploitative and corrupt as possible and destabilizing of the entire functioning of the system which makes let's just say the whatever credit is on that blank blank check it it ends up devaluing it you know and so this blank check assem- essentially becomes um it conceals the the political exploitation and it implies an endless kind of political exploitation and because it's unsubstantiated there there is no corresponding sense of accountability um in terms of how uh how effectively it is utilized the blank check is utilized so it's just the point is just to write the blank check um and that the blank check must be written and that's the end of the exchange between the groups and and that is is what uh the the presupposition of the ideological a formula of equality requires and so um okay so this is getting really into this is tangential i guess but um yeah and, and i just want to say that it is based on the on these sort of presup or on, on these presumptions that you know, if a person is from this group then as a as a member of that group they don't have power even if individually they do have power so you know this kind of selective filtering and delusional filtering of reality just to supply the formula uh of the ideology even while essentially the people who profit from the special favor that government ends up dispensing to pander to the ideology always goes towards the elite um always gets kind of uh, misappropriated and the people who really need it who would actually have profited the most from a clean functioning system that organically um is is you know uh uh developing at at a maximized and optimized uh uh you know which has authentic systems of transformation into it in terms of uh uh broadening access to tangible development instead of just 
this kind of um, rigging the system and handing out special favors, which essentially make it so that the solution is never scalable. And that when the solution isn't scalable, the first port of call in terms of the rhetoric is that we need to be more radical, we need to be more violent, um, we need to uh, demand more to feed this ideological solution, while the, the politically connected exploiter class, you know, are just kind of there in line to to uh, accelerate the, the, their development of what generally becomes usually uh, something like an oligarchy, like they have in Russia. You know, the, this is the the the. Um, the natural precipitation is that, and once you've got those, that kind of politics, now I, I want to make the point, you know, I'm very sympathetic to Putin, because if you think about it, Putin is a populist leader, but he needs that populism, because if he didn't have it, he would have nothing with which to um, placate the power of the oligarchs. If he, you know, he... He, I, 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 he has the interests of, of the Russian people at heart. And he's in a very shitty situation, which essentially cannot be directly addressed. Because if he, you know, he doesn't have more power than the oligarchs. I mean, he does in perhaps in political terms, but he doesn't in, let's say, real terms. And, you know, and individually, each oligarch might have less power than Putin. But, you know, like he can't take one of them out. Uh, uh, because then one of the other ones will take him out because you know they'll see where where that might be going you know it it's it's like you live in a particular um uh uh environment in which you've got five rival gangs or they're not necessarily rivals but you've got you know ruthless people who are rich and powerful and you have to put up with them you have to kind of let them continue uh, in some form and uh, how can you maximize or optimize, you know, f for your people? Well, he has to bring something to the table. He has to be able to be powerful enough in their world. And he can only do that with a, basically a cult of personality. So, I mean, even it's very easy to, I mean, to, to contemplate that Putin is doing the best with, with the hand that he's been dealt. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I'm just... Uh, this is not any kind of political um, uh, assessment. I'm just showing that, uh, you know, when, when you set up these things, because this is really the inheritance of the USSR. I mean, th this is not a modern Russian thing. Um, this is a holdover uh, f from, from the past, essentially. Um, anyway, uh, uh, you know, the, the actual soul of Putin aside, uh, th this is... Um, I think it is very easy to to look at at uh the politics in Russia and say well how how could it actually be better what would be a better future path you know and in as much as you can get the oligarchs to kind of compromise their own selfish interests so that you can try and promote a functioning capitalism and a fun functioning market good enough that you could actually get people that can um you know, be successful in, entrepreneurs and, and actually generate their own wealth. And they're not just sort of part of these these sorts of uh, big uh, mega um, cartels that that's kind of control. Uh, and that you don't just have an economy dominated by big inefficient businesses. Um that basically have, uh, anyway, I'm not going to talk more about that, but, um, yeah, my point is not that Putin is an angel, my point is that uh, one could easily uh, look at certain conditions and uh, uh, very easily um, interpret his intentions as, as being of the purest, it's not that hard, even though what he does is, is not, on the face of it, great, you all... Uh, Please plan something you know, like like. What is a better way, if if he, okay, uh, there's a point. So I mean, you know, you you can sort of even complaining about oligarchs in some sense. Is um. 
because I mean, l l let's say you have a, fun a functioning democracy, which is essentially still, um, still technically what what South Africa has and what America has, for example. Um, but you know, even if you have a functioning democracy, you still have to kind of placate the masses to take uh, accountability as an electorate. Uh, for the government that they receive, if they're not willing to be responsible for having elected the government that they have elected, and and for receiving the governance that they are receiving, you know, effectively, you are at the mercy of of the kind of populist uh, sentiments of just wanting to kind of externalize all blame onto some conspiracy theory. You know how easy it is to complain about powerful people. When you know, uh, when when the, the kind of the character defects of people themselves lend themselves uh, for corruption, you know, and so you know you, you have. Um, So even if you do have uh, somewhat of of a of a of a well functioning democracy, you still have that kind of intrinsic uh, uh, systemic problem essentially of politicians who promise things, and essentially you're selling your children into a worse economic situation. You're, you're undercutting long term prospects just to kind of play Kate to short term um, bargaining. And so, you know, you've got politicians who are effectively um, cannibalizing future generations and they're cannibalizing the, the, the resource. I mean, I've always thought that they, they, on, on some level there could be um, a constitutional kind of, uh, um, you know, th that someone should stand up for the rights of those not yet born, essentially, um, in curtailing certain things. Um, I mean, economic policy in general. Yeah, I mean, but this has to do with a kind of more libertarian or um, uh, sense of, of trying to set up um, the republic as as a as a kind of. Uh, uh, Yeah, I mean, that, that would have to do with kind of enlarging the role of, of or conception of the country as a republic and not so much as a democracy, um, which, you know, there would be some uh, constitutional grounds for that, especially with the, the substantive um, weight in the constitution. There might even be uh, some ways to compel government to to use very particular policy, which would have a much you know, provable outcome in terms of development and transformation, r rather than, you know, the, quite the corrupt policy that is designed uh, to to uh, misallocate uh, state resources. Um, that, but I mean, that obviously would be a huge curtailment of the executive function by the judiciary, but, uh, yeah, uh, doing that might be you know, i've always thought that the public protector uh as an office could do more with reports that would end up with substantive policy derivation uh, uh but uh okay this is all highly t tangential i i wanted to also add a qualification to another thing that i mentioned which was about the point of changing culture which i already uh, made a slight addendum to um this is a second addendum, I guess. I, I just wanted to, you know, this is a very kind of, on some level, it's a metaphysical um, proposition as well in terms of the power of the individual to fully change culture. Um, and and I would just like to say, it doesn't even matter, let's say, if you, I, I first described that how you could have a hand, an individual hand in one person completely changing culture is that you just kind of militize certain, um, and I mean this in, in an abstract sense, that, that you give people the, the, the weapons of argument to kind of 
bring certain resolutions within uh, uh, questions which are in the culture. Um, and then so as those questions find answers, then new questions are asked, and then you kind of have different thematic things. And I, I was even saying that the substance of those answers isn't, the content is not important. What's more important is the thread of how, that the process of how to come to answers is itself, let's say, the, the more um, vital aspect of culture itself, and at least the evolution of culture. And uh, that will end up generating a form much more reliably than just trying to get the right puzzle pieces in place um, in terms of culture. But uh, so I was just going to basically say that you don't even necessarily have to have a hand in the answer itself so much as you have a framework of understanding the answer, which might not even have to be a popular framework, as long as it's in the mix, as long as your framework has a particular um, cultural expression, you know, like you, you, you're, you're expressing it and it, it, it has a kind of meme quality that it's around in some thematic sense. And so even as long as it's noticeable, it doesn't have to be the prevailing dominant narrative. It doesn't have to be the prevailing dominant framework. It just has to be in contention, be in the mix. And that means that eventually things have to give a have to offer a its account to that so i mean like if if you go three or four rounds where your framework is always is never the popular framework but it's there making sense of things according to its perspective and it's expressing that perspective in some sense and it's there as a contrarian voice eventually if it is a winning framework, if it is a useful framework, if it has something to offer, eventually it, you know, essentially builds up something like uh, the antithesis in the context of of, um, of Hegel, you know, that, that, that it has a kind of um, value in developing that antithesis, uh, which will... You know, I just want to say that it doesn't doesn't it, winning is not becoming the most popular that is not important because the, it can still be right on the level of let's just say truth itself so even if it's unpopular and you're the only person that's contending it at least then you still have something that's possible to coalesce around you still have something that's possible to kind of conglomerate people who are interested in organizing um in the line of that uh, of, of 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 that um, aspect, uh, in as much as it can provide a platform for that, um, and I mean a metaphysical platform for that, and you know that really is is all that's needed. That's all that's good enough, especially in the context of a of liberal uh, of a liberal democratic framework, because. You know, people have freedom of association, and you can just sort of, um, you know, you can cut, you can organize. You know, if if you do come together and you and you do take on the responsibility of generating some kind of functional autarky, then you win for yourself and and your community the benefit of choosing its own system of education and and uh, internal organization as it. Uh, as it generates its kind of associative obligations uh, for itself. And, and that is all supported by the liberal democratic state. You don't have to be antagonistic towards the state. And in fact, um, yeah, I did want to make the point that also, you know, in terms of that, that antithetical power, in terms of truth, within certain legal frameworks, that can be enough of a touchstone for you to kind of... Uh, uh, make your own territory within the legal framework as it exists. Um, you don't need to be antagonistic towards the state to create a functional sub-state that is, that is um, you know, I say this, but it's, it's, uh, it's not true in every legal system in every country. Um, the South African constitution, which is one of the much more modern constitutions, and the South African legal framework itself, even before the constitution, is... Um, 
this is going to sound prejudiced, but the South African legal framework is, is the best legal system in the world, essentially, in terms of substantive law. Um, it, it is the only country in the world that still has the Roman law, essentially. In fact, I mean, our legal system is so good. Our legal experts are used in international, uh, uh, you know, in, in terms of uh, uh, like Dubai and, and Kuwait, where they're presiding over these, over these things. Our, our legal minds are, are somewhat, um, uh, are good at also encapsulating and understanding other legal systems because ours, let's just say, is... Uh, in, in principle, has has uh, a, a broader sense of, of uh, a conceptual categorization, but also, um, uh, you know, the the different uh, decisions kind of that delimit other systems of, of legal operation. They don't have quite the same. Um, uh, they're they're not as reasonable. To, to put it simply, they, they usually most systems of law are have have very arbitrary features, and and usually that's where the sort of the devil creeps into things, whereas the the kind of uh, the the core of 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 the Roman law and the Roman Dutch, as the Dutch received it, but as they also kept the core of the Roman law, um, doesn't suffer. Uh, uh, okay, I'm, but anyway, the, 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 the point of this is um, that uh, you know if, if you if you take a legal problem deep enough and there is the depth does exist, especially in, in the Roman uh, system, um, you can find remedies, let's just say to uh problems um and and i'm i do think that the south african constitution is is uh it goes nicely with with the roman dutch system um especially in the context of of what i'm kind of uh, uh sketching out uh, which is um mm, let me just summarize it in three lines. Uh, I mean, in some sense, I'm I'm a left libertarian Marxist, and I don't believe in taking over the state. I don't believe in touching uh, state authority. I think it's an incredibly poisonous thing for for anything left wing to do. The the point is is one should buy one's freedom from the market in setting up some kind of autonomous system. Uh, essentially, uh, capitalism should stay the default. It should never be uh, removed. Um, it should be used as a platform uh, that can be peacefully transcended while preserving it. And in fact, it would be better to preserve it as as a kind of uh, default framework to, you know, if everything else, if you can't negotiate some kind of separate alternative way of dealing with something, you need something to revert to. And private property, I think, is the only thing that's going to be able to keep the libertarian instinct intact. And, you know, and especially if if you are supposedly Marxist or anything and you want to take over the state, I mean, essentially, you've condemned yourself to having to indoctrinate your, your um, the people who don't agree with you, you know, and you can't end up resolving problems that need to be resolved anyway. Like, I mean, if we do have resource and sustainability problems, that is only ever going to be uh, solved uh, on in the level of, let's say... Um, uh, what's the word that means civilian, but civilian responsibility. It's only ever going to come about in the context of a freedom of association. And the state, you're not freely to associate with the state. You're kind of stuck with it, uh, you know. And so therefore, you don't want the state uh, uh, prescribing things like how many children you can have. I mean, you know, it gets very, very problematic very quickly. And so the only way I would say you know, um, is that you're going to have to be limited by the market. You're going to have to, you know, if, if people aren't willing to, to, let's say, come to some kind of alternative political um, or social arrangement between themselves that is sustainable, that they can kind of uh, agree to and be a part of or, or want to join or 
develop and and uh, create for themselves, then you know they should languish. Let's just say in the market. You know, if 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 they're not, you know, if if they cannot negotiate with people, if they cannot communicate with people, if they don't have those sorts of virtues um, or capacity, if they just want to be this kind of uh, nuclear um, despotic force of, of a kind of egoism or something like that, I mean, perhaps the market is the best thing for them. Um, until they uh, want to move to something else, you know. Um, and then that comes with, you know, I mean, if you have a already established systems, I mean, if I can't speak to the future, but if I, let's say, developed one of these organizations, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily want to welcome anyone to join it, you know. Uh, you know, that would have to do with capacity and, and things like that. And, and if, if things are possible uh, to absorb more people, but um, I would certainly want to offer support to people who would want to uh, have a similar way of life, you know, and sort of teach them how to do it or offer advice and freely share information and help them set it up because, you know, you essentially you're in, especially if you're in a, a something that has functional autarky, you want your neighbors to be uh, secure and um, perhaps even possible that, that they are wealthy and, and uh, content enough that they might even be able to offer collateral support in a time of kind of disaster of, of a natural kind, perhaps. That, you know, w when you have a system that has functional autarky, that, that is generally self-sufficient at that point you know you want something else from from your um uh, uh what do you call it uh relations in terms of your external relations um with other groups you 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 want everyone to be uh peaceful and content so that they you know aren't going to maraud or they're not going to come to your doorstep in desperation you know, uh, and so, you know, one might even want to take certain actions that have a synergistic positive effect in uh, prolonging the, the longevity and the vitality of the market, also because it might be useful to trade through it. Um, also, because if you have functional autarky, you can do things uh, with the market that could end up being better for both systems, because essentially... You are the market is somewhat on some systematic level the market is not intelligent, but if you have something that let's say is immune to market forces and can choose how it uh, interacts with the market, you could end up with a kind of uh, two tier uh, society in some sense or not two tier but uh, two sections. You know you could have um, you know because it, effectively it's like a public sector and a private sector, but the public sector is actually uh, governed by um, autonomous uh, uh, sets of people. And, you know, obviously, you know, there's no guarantee in anything. You know, there's no guarantee that some of these autonomous uh, collectives won't be run by idiots or won't be driven into the ground or won't fail for some social, cultural reason uh you know uh or 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 that it won't you know some government won't won't be aggressive towards it or antagonistic against it uh, being threatened by it you know some kind of old but i would say you know the solution really is just to offer collateral support in some sense you know like acquiesce to being taxed Perhaps acquie, you know, if if you if you can absorb it, you know, until you can sort of work out a peaceful middle road or something like that, compromise, um, and uh, uh, especially with the internet, I don't think one has to worry too much about kind of being undermined um, 
in some kind of covert sense. I mean, that's always possible, but you know, you just have to literally take it as it comes. Um, but also, uh, the ideal is that eventually, if you have a good enough model, essentially, you can say, well, we can just absorb unemployed people, we can actually make the market function better, because when there's too much of a surplus of something, even like unemployment, it's a huge drag on the market. Whereas if you can kind of have something that can sort of um, independently, uh, you know, obviously you're going to buy from the market what is cheap and you're going to sell to it what is expensive if you even want to have a relationship to the market until you've set up enough of a kind of internal wealth machine. Because really all you need is enough, let's say, um, profit, although profit would just be a kind of accounting term within the internal system to concentrate capital investment so that you can increase productivity. And that, that is the engine of wealth, essentially. Um, and if you can do that, um, and essentially you, you've got the benefit of capitalism within your enclave or whatever. The problem is, is that how do you organize in a way that is culturally sustainable within such a system? Because although you might have an alternative economic model that, let's say, allows you to be functionally independent from the market, uh, you know, it's it becomes a different world. People have always, or at least not always, but people have um, related... Uh, you know, everything has been integrated with uh, the market for a while. Status. Status is going to be a thing, you know. Like, uh, this This is a real problem, because, you know, the idea, especially the kind of ideological insanity that was kind of injected into the, the new Marxist model of, of how people conceive of themselves and others, you know, it was, that stuff was, was very poisonous. Um, yeah, you, you need a, a, some kind of psychological knowledge, I would say, or some kind of, even that isn't enough. You, 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 know, you perhaps need to even invent a game within the internal organization in which you have a role which you can choose, kind of like an avatar um, or, or, or a, um, just trying to think of an analogy, but, you know, like, so you have, if you, I can't actually think of a game that has different types of uh interaction in the game like different like because you get games where everyone is an equal player but then you get games in which you you have a choice that you can make and those choices um i'm just trying i can't think of a game that has different pieces essentially so you you at some point you get to choose and then obviously that choice perhaps should not be permanent. You should be able to revise that choice every two years or something like that. Basically, you take a different package and you can choose which package to take. And it comes with different benefits and different, um, a different scope, you know. And so you can kind of game your role in terms of your, your access to whatever internal uh, uh, form of direct... Okay, this is this is hugely tangential, but yeah. So I mean, you know, how you set these things up to kind of mimic the the utility that we have in the market, because you know, people think that oh, well, currency money is very limiting. I mean, it, the furthest thing can be from the truth. I mean, the the reason why people like money. I mean, like if you think about, it, no one wants money. They want the things that money can buy. But, you know, unless you have an unlimited way of, of you know, and, and if you, if everyone has access to any kind of material, um, you know, if they can get the material needs fulfilled at will, let, let's just say, uh, The, the social value of money, because that had a social economy attached to it, not just a material economy. So there's a lot invested in that, which 
also has to do with status, also perhaps has to do with sexuality. Um, you know, so I would say that, you know, there are a lot of things why we can't just get there. And a lot of it has to do with um, uh, uh, fe female exploitation and female privilege. I would say that one of the biggest bars we have to this kind of society is, is the kind of um, beta quadra values as they have uh, uh, crystallized in in all the the dogma that that that, that exists within uh, our, our species at present, you know, which has to do with tribal stuff, it has to do with gender stuff, um, and you know, if if we can't diagnose these things, um, and even if we can diagnose them, you know, you you need a way to have them on some level excised, but in a transparent manner, which means not to repress them, you, to actually give them uh, a venue uh, or a vehicle with which to be exhausted. Because, um, you know, yeah, so... Uh, and, yeah, so, so there's, there's a lot of thinking in, in this, you know, which you, know, you, you can't just kind of repress until you get what you want. You actually have to find... Um, an avenue of expression. Uh, and this is why I say uh, th the way to replacing money, let's just say, is that essentially um, what money represents is something that you're never going to get rid of, but you need to sort of sublimate it into something. Um, and that might be a game. That might be something like a game where everyone knows the rules. And so then there is some potential level of, let's say, exploitation which which is possible or conceivable to be acted out but that it has a, a kind of um perhaps some kind of balancing you know, in the structure of the game itself you could easily set up the rules so that it's transparent enough that it's never going to get out of control and you can see what people are doing as they're doing it um that's the best i think you can do because you know at some point the point, you, you can't make thoughts illegal, you can't make certain character traits, you can't just sort of wish them away. You have to find a way for for them to kind of be examined for what they are. You, you need to have good enough, um, a kind of, uh, uh, you know, so the, I mean, the, the, there's, you know, there's that song, We Didn't Start the Fire. I'm not going to go into that too much, but uh, the idea is, is that People want to be on the verge of some kind of confrontation. They 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 want to be in the mix. You know, you can't just kind of just uh, uh, daze them with with drugs. You know, you the 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 idea. You know how how many of of the integral issues are being overlooked simply because we can find some people who don't fit into the system feed them drugs and park them off somewhere where they can be ignored and where we don't have to listen to that. You know, that, that's that in some metaphysical sense is the cancer which we are suffering from is the idea that you can just kind of uh, uh, get the people who disagree, round them up and do away with them. You know, it's the, it's the same kind of concept. Um, When I illustrate, you know, these illustrations are not uh, are not infallible in terms of, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the, uh, I'm not not trying to draw up these pictur picturesque, um, hard uh, uh, principles that that that, uh, that that the illustration is is meant to convey, um, but it, it's it, it's it's. Um, yeah, you know, that can be dangerous in itself because that can be the the seed of of some new dogma or or crazy orthodoxy of of these hard and fast rules. But um, yeah, people want to have their issue dealt with in some sense, you know, and it doesn't help to to sort of be. Um, 
placid uh, when that is not what's called for. You know, I mean, some people are testy because they're looking for a rebuke in some sense. They need the rebuke, um, even if they go into a spiraling reaction to it. You know, if there's not, you know, in, in some sense, when people choose a certain course, uh, that's part of free will in some sense. Um, they can just keep on making the wrong decision, uh, one after the other, you know. Uh, it's somewhat unfortunate if they can't kind of self-reflect. And sort of examine the postulates and and the presuppositions. Uh, anyway, that, that's um, perhaps uh, long enough. Rant, yeah, at going into things which are, I mean, hopefully these things, this, this kind of uh, dissertation, to call it that, is uh, perhaps relevant and kind of roughly on topic to some things which integral people have floating around in their minds. Um, not that I, have, I haven't read a book yet, I'm, I must seems that they're quite a few. Perhaps I'll just listen to some more YouTube on it and try to get somewhat more educated uh, on the subject. But um, 